So one of my biggest struggles being a part of this community is managing my money in a way where I can afford both VV NFTs and the OMI token. So that being said, I'd like to introduce you all to the first official partner of this channel, Uthrive. Uthrive is an app that allows you to optimize your credit card use to maximize profits. On average, most people using credit cards are missing out on at least $500 a year. You don't have to pay for anything at all. Before you make any purchase you normally make using your credit cards, Uthrive will analyze your purchase in seconds and tell you which of your credit cards will give you the highest cash back and reward saving you hundreds of dollars a year doesn't matter if you're grocery shopping getting gas or planning a trip anytime you spend money save money with you thrive yo what's going on y'all i'm Cavell anderson and we're back with another vv and ecomi video in this one we're going to be covering something pretty big on the channel and this is going to relate back to some of the influencers and people that we're seeing leave the community or take out money from the from their investment in the community and things like that and why some of these decisions are being made and some of the information that's out there because i feel like in the vv bubble we don't really have a lot of educated investors who actually look outside of vv and all this information is what investors and people looking to make money traders and stuff like that people looking to profit from this space you need to have much more information than someone who was just purely a fan of collectibles and i think that everyone well a lot of people in the vv community is just like oh everyone should just love vv love the collectibles love i don't even i don't just love these things i am here for profit and that's that's been my biggest goal from the beginning so you have to understand why you are here and in this community i believe in this because i believe this is one going to be one of the biggest things in the world for for a lot of different people people who love this and i think that it's going to be this is this is the type of project that can make other people love collecting and other people love the utility that's going to come around these things that's going to be collected in the future um so yeah i think that vv is one of those projects that comes a, a, around once in a lifetime and i think that there's a lot of opportunity here to profit so that is where my attachment to the project comes from um, I think more people need to be real with themselves and be honest about why they're here because that's going to that's gonna really take you down your rabbit hole of which wh where you go. Like you have some people who break down the value of these collectibles and stuff down to a science and all that, and that's just something they care about, so they do that. You have me who focus more so on where's the opportunity, how I can I bring out the most profit and things like that. Like it's, it's going to be different approaches, and you have to figure out what approach wor works best for you. None of us are financial advisors in this community. It's all about your situation, analyzing where you are and what what route you can take to get you where you want to be, because everyone has different end goals as well. Some people want to have a billion dollars and they'll feel like they're fine. Other people, you're OK with a couple hundred thousand and you can you, you're good with that. Like it, it's just it comes down to what you're looking for, the lifestyle you want and things like that. So um, one thing that I am going to start introducing to this channel is more content that relates to the overall financial market and and how it can impact vv in the long run and also it, this is a channel that has mainly been centered around vv but this is about me and my, and my growth within the finance sector um this is not just about vv to be completely honest it's about me it's about me my growth my journey and vv is just a massive part of that because it's the number one project that i believe in personally um that that's just what it is so yeah, we are going to be introducing more things here because I think it's very, very important to start expanding some minds and focusing on some different things. I wanted to do this on another channel, but um, I, I decided to, to just bring it to this channel because this is who I am. This is Cavell Anderson. I am somebody who wants to grow, make as much money as possible and and bring my entire family out of poverty. That's that's my goal. That's my objective. So, um, yeah, that, that's there's no point in making a different channel when I am who I am and VV is a part of that journey. So, and it's just a part of that journey. So that being said, new content is going to be coming on the channel for sure, but we are going to be jumping into something interesting. I don't want this, this content to alarm anyone. I don't want anyone to get scared or nervous or, or anything like that. I do want you to be aware of this though, because not knowing this type of information, not knowing the stuff that's actually going on, it's only going to be harmful for you. At least if you know you can make decisions and prepare for it, which is what some creators are doing. Um, and and some people don't understand what they're doing. So yeah, I mean, th this is this this is an interesting situation that um, I don't believe we've ever found ourselves in, in, in ever before. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna check it out, y'all. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And yeah, let's jump into it. The thing that you have to do before you talk about what is happening now, I think it's probably useful to go back and you have to really start at the end of the great financial crisis. 
And the reason is there was a bunch of people coming out of the GFC who confused what the US government and some European governments were doing. At the time, there was the risk of a huge financial contagion. And so the US stepped in and the Federal Reserve started to use their balance sheet to buy toxic assets, right? And the ECB did that, and I think Japan did that as well. Anyways, a bunch of banks did it. I mean, a, bu a bunch of governments did it. And then there was this body of pseudoscientific economists who coined this thing called modern monetary theory, which basically said, hey, you can keep printing money and introducing it into the economy to smooth things out and to actually drive long-term growth. And it turns out that a bunch of government officials fell for it. I think that that's like those people who hear something and it works in their favor for the moment. So they want to believe it. So they trick themselves into believing something that's absolutely crazy and foolish like that. That's what that that seems like to me. That doesn't even really make sense to be completely honest. Like, you... anyway, let, let, let's let's continue. And if you fast forward to 2022, so like because 14... if the people who really are running things falls for something like that and actually thinks that way, it's it's no surprise we're in this situation if that's the level of thinking that, that these people have. Like, that's crazy. 15 years later, you know, governments around the world had printed something to the tune of about 30, 35 odd trillion dollars of money into the economy that should have never been there. So the thing to remember is like, we have not necessarily just been obfuscating true supply demand in the last six or eight months when we've been talking about a recession or inflation. We've been actually doing it since 2008. It's just that it's been building up in the system. So one of the things that we have to realize is that all of that money somehow needs to get destroyed in some way, shape or form if the true economic equilibrium is meant to be found. What is true supply? What is true demand in the absence of government sloshing money around, trying to prop up things that should not be propped up or buying votes or all the grifts that these folks have engaged in in the last you know decade and a half have to get undone. So that's the backdrop. So if you think about taking $30 trillion out of the global economy, you know, you're talking about almost, you know, I think it's 85 trillion is the world GDP. So like, you know, it's, it's, it's almost half of an entire year's worth of global GDP. It's going to take three years probably of the slow, meticulous, you know, running off of money, you know, not reintroducing new money. So it seems like we're at the beginning of the beginning of something that's going to be long and drawn out. Now that's Sack separate from, you. and that's separate from whether we're in a recession or not. That's just the bear market that we're in, right? And so you have to look at asset prices today as a microcosm of a much larger trend that has to be about fake money pushing asset prices up and now taking all that fake money out and finding out what the real price of something is. So values, we're going to see new values is what he's proposing. This is what he thinks. We're going to see new values of things as as much as thirty trillion dollars gets taken out of the economy. So it's kind of similar to what happened with Vivi, where you know prices got super inflated. So we don't know what somebody is actually willing to pay for certain assets. So we saw like Secret Rare Spider Man, for instance, that got up to a hundred thousand dollars. Are people willing to pay that price, or were they willing to pay that price with money that wasn't really theirs to begin with? So. Is that the value of it, or is it much, much less than $100,000 someone is going to be willing to pay? Now, you can look at some of the collectible space and, and argue that these things are really worth tons of money. Like, these these things are really worth this money. But what if the same thing has happened in, in different places throughout throughout these other markets as well? Now, I don't know if the collector's industry is like is like that. I don't—I don't, I think it's much more likely for— things to be inflated in stock markets and stuff like that. In the collector's community, people just pay for what they love. They pay the price that they're willing to pay for the things that they love. So that that's that's from from what I've gathered, that that's what it seems like the collector's community is about. But I mean, we it's hard to say. It's hard to say. We don't know. We don't really know what prices are going to be, what things are going to be at. Um, and I think that one of the reasons that a lot of investors in the community have a lot more security when it comes down to the OMI token is because regardless of what any individual asset with NVV is priced at, one fact is that the OMI token will slowly become more valuable. You can't guarantee that about everything that you're holding in your collection on VV right now. 
you cannot guarantee that about everything in your collection. You can guarantee that about the Omi token, though. Um, you can guarantee, especially if you believe in the company, if you believe that they're going to implement all these things and use cases for the Omi token, who cares if it takes five, 10 years? It, it's going to become more valuable because it's deflationary. So it's it's automatically going to become more valuable like that. That's just that that's that's how it works. You can't say that same thing for the assets. So if they release. Let, let's say they release a thousand, ten thousand, a million more collectibles on Vivi. I mean, when it comes down to each collectible, they're going to be worth less because it's going to be so many different things to choose from. So people, the, the money is going to be split up amongst a lot of assets. There's only one Omi token. There's only one Omi token, and all the no matter how many assets they re, they release, it all impacts the Omi token, and it's going to do so even more in the future. So the Omi token is a much more solid investment, in my opinion. It's always been. Um, I think that everyone just got a lot ex, really really excited seeing the prices and things on VV. But I mean, it's going to be going down for a while. It's going to be it's going to, we're going to be going through hard times, especially based off of information and stuff we're hearing like this. But um, let, let's continue. Um, let, let's continue. And I just don't think that takes six months. So for all the people that were, you know, fingers crossed, hoping that this would be the end of it, Fed raises 75, we're done with this, they're going to raise 75 more. I just think that's not how it's probably going to be. It's going to take, you know, 24, 36 months. That may mean the bottom doesn't happen for another 18 months. So I think it's a, we're in, we're in for a lot of choppy um, market action. I think you need to buckle your seatbelt because the next three, four, five months of CPI will probably be very, very bad. Seven, eight, nine percent. Why? There are a handful of components that have gotten completely run away. Number one, the biggest one is rent. And so rent works on a three month lag. We're going to reintroduce what the true owner's equivalent rent is into CPI. So we can already forecast that CPI going up. Oil is at 105 bucks a barrel. Russia is basically trying to break the back of Europe by now messing with their nat gas supplies. Um, the German energy minister yesterday said that if that happens, it could be a contagion equivalent to Lehman Brothers with respect to energy. When you play all of these things out, what you have is unfortunately rampant runaway costs that really have no mechanism to get back in check in the absence of some real governmental changes, our policy on this Ukraine-Russia war, you know, how we intend to sort of uh, work or cooperate or fight with China, all of these things have to get solved. So, so notice how all these little problems, these little things impacting random little things, they just all come together and have a big impact on the economy and even trickles down to the assets that we are currently holding. Um, it's like nothing is is exempt from this. So once you understand, I think VV is a good entrance point into understanding more about the broader finance space. And this is why it's important. I think VV is so important because those who are interested in knowing more can can, can use VV as a starting point and, and explore more and learn about things like this. And those who are just interested in having fun, having entertainment and using VV as a distraction, it can be used as that as well. So it's like the best of both both worlds here. So in the absence of that, prices are going to continue to go up. And so what does the Fed do? How does it throw away what little credibility it has left when there's eight and nine percent inflation prints and saying, we think we're done for right now? You can't do that. So they will overcorrect because there is just going to be so much pressure for them to act. All roads I think lead to lower equity prices. And I think what David said astutely is, we've seen the first wave, but now it has to touch all these other areas. For example, we have gotten totally drunk on debt as a country. One of the most obvious places where we've been serving alcohol far too late into the night is in the financing of all these private equity leverage buyouts. Yeah, right. Leverage these are is dangerous. These are sketchy companies that are sort of like, you know, teetering on insolvency at times where private equity comes in, levers up the balance sheet with debt. They price it right to the edge of what's legally allowed or what's financeable, and then they go do it. But that's all assuming the economy continues to grow. And so if all of a sudden you have some recessionary forces or prices go up and earnings don't, You'll have, you know, a contagion in the debt markets. You could have a contagion in the commodity market. 
I also want to tell you guys a quick story. One of the most interesting canaries in the coal mine of all of this was two days ago and what uh, happened to Facebook. And this sort of ties a lot of this stuff together in terms of like economics, inflation, asset prices, equities, tech. We should we, then we can try to talk about non sort of, you know, big tech. But the everybody was saying, oh, gosh, the market's going to rip on the open. You know, we were closed for Juneteenth. And then on Tuesday, the market, you know, the S&P was up like 250 basis points, 2.5 percent. And the Nasdaq was also up, you know, call it maybe 300 basis points, r roughly. But Facebook was down like 400 points, right? So it's a big spread. And why is that? And I was like, this makes no sense to me. What is going on with this price action? Everything was up. Apple was up. Google was up. And so I called around and, you know, I was like, why is this happening? And this is the best explanation I got. When you look at who the incremental buyer is in the stock market, it tends to give you a sense of whether prices can go up or will continue to go down. And the poorest informed buyer tends to be retail. And the most informed buyer tends to be these very large institutional hedge funds, right? So there's a spectrum. And uh, Facebook is an example of one of the, of big tech that is poorly owned by retail. So it's mostly owned by smart money. And the case that smart money makes for owning Facebook is that it's got an extremely cheap price to earnings ratio. So you must own it. And what they said was that they, you know, looking at the tea leaves of consumer demand, what they actually re-underwrote was that actually, it's not that the price to earnings was cheap, it's that the E in PE was just wrong. And if they pass through all of these increases in inflation and, you know, their earnings expectations into Facebook, it's actually more like fair value at a lower price. That's why they sold it so much on a day where the market was up. Now, why is that important? Well. Eventually, you're going to touch all these other stocks as well that are going to go through earnings revisions in this recession. This is where I think Wall Street has done a very poor job on behalf of retail. And when you when you listen to stuff like this, or well, me personally, you have to kind of relate it back to what you're invested in, some of the decisions that you're making and some of the things that you're, you know, you're putting your money into, you're putting your assets into. Are you going to come across some of these same hurdles are you going to come across some of these same things and when it comes down to fair value for things is like are you going to be heavily impacted by things correcting so um when it comes down to me personally i, I will tell you all at this point my strategy it hasn't really changed at all i mean like I said, VV for me was a retirement plan. I've never been through what's going on right now. I don't know if anyone has. Um, I've never seen anything like it. I don't know what to expect. I don't know who's right, who's wrong. This could all be speculation. This could all be one man's opinion. Well, it's definitely one man's opinion. And maybe it's a group of people because he obviously reaches out to people and they have these type of conversations. But because I have not experienced it, I've always been a learner where I had to go through things the hard way. I thought that that I used to think that that was a bad thing, but in reality, I, I think that I've learned so much and grown so much because it's most memorable when you learn it the hard way, when you learn things yourself. You just have to make the best decision that you possibly can and always remember the lessons that you learned if the decision didn't turn out to be the most optimized decision that you could have made. Um, so, yeah, this is something that I'm, I'm going to hold through. Um, I'm, this is, this, like I said, this retirement. I put, I put money into this so I will not touch it. That was the goal for this which means for my um, immediate financial needs and other short to midterm investment needs, I will invest in other things. I will make other decisions. I will do other things. So that's just my personal approach to, to what's going on right now. Um, while still, this is the same. I still believe in, in this project long term. I still believe in, in what's going to happen long term. In, in terms of pricey, that, pricing, that could be a little bit sketch for a while. It, it could definitely be sketch for a while. Um, we don't know. We don't know how what's going to end up happening. So, yeah. If you look at the average estimates of earnings, you will be shocked to hear that Wall Street actually has this year being record earnings. Next year, earnings continuing to go up. How do you see earnings continuing to go up into these prints like this when you cannot pass through 80, 90 percent increases in energy and cogs and whatnot? You'll, ha you'll have to sell fewer things because there'll be fewer people with jobs to buy things. I think Wall yeah. Street's wrong. Okay. And I think that earnings are going to go down this year and will definitely go down in 23. 
And so I think what probably happens is the entire world of equities needs to get repriced at a lower price. And in that, it's going to put enormous pressure on these cash burning, non profitable tech companies. And, you know, what we really did was we gave folks just a ton of money. And what did they do? They acted rationally. They spent it. Yep. And now we have to take it all back. Um, and that's, that's, I don't think that's going to be as easy or as simple as people think. It's stunning that, you know, the reason the stock market went up dollar for dollar was actually tied to the growth in the M2 money supply. The correlation was 0.92. So for every dollar the, that, that the Fed printed, the stock market went up by 92 cents. So, you know, it stands to reason that if the Fed is going to take three to five trillion dollars of value out, then we have to re-rate the equity markets by three to five trillion dollars at a minimum. And then you have to re-rate and re-baseline for earnings. And so that's probably another 20 or 30%. Let, let's, it's gonna, we keep losing our footing to China. Just today, CATL, which is one of the largest battery manufacturers, announced a pretty meaningful improvement in their you know, 3.0 battery design. These guys are now building batteries that can go 1,000 kilometers um, in both of the major you know, um, uh, compositions that really matter, NMC and LFP. And, and I just look at these things and I'm like, wow, we cannot actually get capacity funded to build domestic battery capability because we're too busy kind of basically virtue signaling on things that don't matter. Um, and in return, nothing happens. China continues to lap us. We, uh, it's really, it's a really bad state of affairs. We are, uh, we are in a very odd period in terms of government effectiveness. So there you have it, man. So this is why people are making the decisions that they're making. I, this is why people are saying liquidity is king right now, because there's more than likely going to be a lot more opportunity coming soon. And if you're liquid, you'll be able to take advantage of it. You'll probably see better prices. You'll, you'll see better um, opportunity. Um, but I mean, it's just, this is, that's just what it's looking like right now. That that's, that's, this is a side of what people are seeing. Well, obviously, as he as he stated, Wall Street sees something different. So there are sides to this. It's just a matter of how much information you have and what it is that you believe and what like based on your research, because that's what it comes down to. The only person that matters is you and what you're going to do and what's best for your situation. So, um, yeah, it's just important that this information is known. But let me know what you all think in the comments section down below, fam. Um, Drop that thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, Joe.